In this video, I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to play Reign of Dragonus, the high-flying dragon game by Grandpa Bex Games. The objective of this game is to get rid of all your cards before anyone else. Now, each dragon in this game is part of a clan of 12, and each clan has a different level of strength. Lachan is the weakest, up to the Gildan, which is the strongest. The Dragonus is a 13 and is the most powerful dragon in the game. In addition to the dragons, there are some special cards which we will discuss a bit later. The setup will vary depending on the number of players. I'm going to quickly show you the setup for 2-4 to four players as an example, but you can pause the video right here if you need to see the setup grid for 5-8 to eight players. For 2-4 to four players, you will separate the clans and include 5 of them. You will also include one of each of the special cards. Now onto my favorite part of the rules, who goes first? In this game, there's no way to strategically go first, it's just the player with the lowest number in the lowest clan who goes first. When dealing the cards, not all of them will be dealt out. You will just deal 13 to each player. However, if you like to count cards and want all of the cards to be dealt out, you will need to set up the game using the advanced rules. Throughout the video, I will touch briefly on the advanced rules, but for more details, you're going to want to check out the description below. The first player sets the pattern by playing a single card, a set, or a run. But the first play of the round must include the lowest card of the lowest clan. In this game, a set is at least two cards, and a run is three to five cards. Also, a run does not have to be from the same clan, so these cards would be a valid play. Then play will move clockwise. When it comes to you, you can either follow the pattern or pass. If you choose to follow the pattern, you must play the same number of cards and the same type of play, like a single, a set, or a run. However, the highest card you play must beat the previous player's highest card by playing a higher number or an equal numbered card from a stronger clan. For example, you can play a pair of sevens on a pair of fives, but you can also play this pair of sevens on top of the other pair of sevens since this clan has five jewels and this clan has four. If you can't play or choose not to, you can pass and are out of the challenge. This means you won't be able to play again for the rest of the challenge unless a revive card is played, giving all players the ability to re-enter the challenge. Once everyone is passed, remove the cards, and the player who played last sets the pattern for the next challenge. Before we go into the special cards, did you know that you can get 15% off all the games and the merch on Grandpa Beck's website? Yeah, you can. Just use code BRIMLY15 and you'll get 15% off your entire purchase or purchases. So now that you know how to save some money on these games, let's get back into the rules by discussing the special cards. In this game, there are three humans in this world of dragons. Page, Squire, and Dragon Knight. These cards are wild and stand in for any number within the range, noted on the corner of the card. As for their clan status, the Page and Squire are equal to the lowest rank Loken clan, and the Dragon Knight represents the most powerful Gildan clan. You can play these cards as part of a set or run, or even on their own. If played by themselves, the Page is considered an 8, the Squire is a 9, and the Dragon Knight is a 12. Next up, Revive. The Revive card allows you to reset the pile, but you still must follow the pattern. So if the pile started with a pair of fives and now has a pair of nines, if you play a Revive, you can play any pair, even one lower than the starting numbers. If you get rid of the rest of your cards but still have a Revive, you may reveal that card and you win the round. In the basic game, a Revive card may not be played on a 12 or a 13, and this includes special cards played as a 12. The last special card is the most powerful Dragonus. The Dragonus can be played as a 13 in a run or individually as the highest card. In the basic rules, the Dragonus must be played according to the pattern set in the challenge, but if you choose to play the advanced rules, which I would recommend, then the Dragonus can be played by itself regardless of the pattern and beats everything. It is the ultimate trump card. Additionally, in the advanced rules, you can trump any pattern by playing a horde, set, or run. With two to four players, this will be a set of four cards of the same number or a suited run of four cards, which must be from the same clan. If a player puts down a horde, it takes control of the challenge and wins, unless another player chooses to outbid them with a horde that has a higher card. While a horde beats all patterns, it cannot be played on the Dragonus, but the Dragonus can be played on a horde and beat it. When a player gets rid of all of their cards, they win. If you choose to play multiple rounds, the winner gets 3 points and then you will count up the cards of the remaining players. Whoever has the next lowest number of cards gets 2 points and the next gets 1 point. After playing a few rounds, the player with the highest score wins. If you want to play a fun pirate trick-taking card game, you're going to want to check out this video here. 